Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Jenny from Polly's Paper Studio, and I have been looking for some new supplies and getting a little frustrated at the lack of information I find on them, so I thought I could do a series where I pick up a new tool or supply and try it out and give an honest review so that um, I can share my experience with you guys and how well I liked it. At the end, I'm going to rate these supplies or tools with a... 10 out of 10 or whatever degree I like it um, on a would I buy it again scale. So today is the Spellbinders Cinch and Go Poinsettia. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, I picked this up at Amazon and it was $9 on uh, Prime. And yes, I do already have a poinsettia die. And this one is from Cherryland Designs and I received this as part of my design team allotment. So this one I did also find on Amazon and it was $21 and I will show you the difference later when we get into the finished flowers. So my first impression is I really like the fact that the petals are wider. So you're going to get a nice full flower. I also liked that there was a variety of sizes so that you could stagger them and create the layers that you want for your project. I noticed there are a few pieces here. I don't really know what they are. There isn't any kind of instructions that comes with this. I did look online and I didn't see anything about what those things were or why it's called cinch. I really just do not know. I'm not going to use those pieces, obviously, because one, I don't know what they are, but I also like to add my own center. So that's a part that you may like, um, and it doesn't affect how I feel about this die set. I'm just not going to use it. So they come in a good size flower, which is better than some of the others that I looked for. I did look extensively. Some of them were really large. And for me, I'm a card maker. It's not necessarily the right scale for me to work with, but I did like these. And then I did like that the center was very solid. So it makes for a good gluing surface. I went ahead and I cut these out with some regular 65 pound weight cardstock. A portion of this, these petals are embossed and you can see that worked. I don't know, maybe you can't see. That worked pretty well. I'm not going to be able to take advantage of that because I'm going to use a shaping tool, so I'm going to lose most of that, but it did work um, in this 65 pound weight. I know some people like to make their flowers from 80 pound, and I don't know, I don't have any of that to try, but it did work for this purpose. And my machine is very old, I have just, um, well, I have two. I have a Gemini, which mostly just sits in the closet because it needs to be plugged in, and I have a cat who chews on cords, so I just don't tend to reach for that very often. So I just use the cuddle bug, and this was perfect because you can really arrange those dies to get the best use out of the paper. In fact, I got five finished flowers from each eight and a half by 11 sheet. So I think that's a good value and it, it isn't wasteful because you can really kind of group them together in a way that you're getting the most use out of the paper. Okay, so each flower is intended to have four layers, which <clears throat> makes it very nice and full. For my purpose, I want to shape them. So I'm just going to use the shaping tool here and define all of these petals. Okay, so once you've got the cup shape on all of the backs of the petals, you will want to come back in with a larger um, tip there and shape the center so that it will create that well in the middle for each of the layers to be put in. So when I do flowers, I like to glue them onto another surface just so that I know when I punch through them, uh, I'm not gonna be tearing any of the layers or losing any of the petals. So I have used my half inch hole punch and I've just cut out some small circles here. <clears throat> so I'm using this 
Pentart Express glue. Um, it was sent to me in a design team box and it works really great for this, but any wet adhesive that you like working with I think will work perfectly as long as you remember that moderation is the most important thing to consider when adhering layers because you don't want all of that wet adhesive to come out and ruin the top of your project. So I'm just going to hold each layer in place, add a little adhesive to the next, and then I can continue to build and it won't lose its shape. So this is going to be the very last one. <clears throat> and I'm just going to secure that right in the middle. You take your time and get that lined up perfectly. I, I didn't, I rushed a little bit, but that's okay because I think it will still be pretty. Okay, so this will set up very quickly. And what I want to do is bring in my crocodile and I'm using the 1 8 inch side. So a thing to consider with flowers is if you're going to punch the middle, you do need to be able to get at least half of that flower into the groove so that you don't mangle it when you're punching the hole. So this one does fit perfectly. And I'm just going to work that in. I don't know if that shows up so well, but I'm going right for the middle. And now you can see how adding that additional piece in the back has really helped to keep all that together. Okay, so you can shape this a little bit now. Um, <clears throat> finish it at the end. I want to add some stamens. These these I've picked up from Really Reasonable Ribbon. These are new in her shop and I am absolutely in love with them. So I picked up Light Mocha and Deep Coffee. And so I'm gonna use both of these in the flowers that I show later. But for this one, I'm gonna pick that Light Mocha or the Light Coffee. It's really a dusty sort of pinky color. It's really lovely. And I just wanna grab like, Mm, six of them depending on how full you want your center I think sometimes you can get them too full um, and they don't look quite as organic and natural so pick out there's six <clears throat> line them up as best you can and then fold them in half and then I'm just gonna work that through the center and pull them all the way back and keep them tight against the center of that flower. We have done this previously with the other die when we made Halloween flowers. So this is just basically the same process, but with a different die. Now I've got that loop in the back and I wanna cut that because I wanna separate these on either side so that I don't wind up with all the bulk right on one side because I wanna be able to add this almost, um, like a flat back flower. So I'm just gonna add a tad of hot glue and that will hold on the next layer. See now I've got that glue added right to the middle. I'm gonna take that second punched circle and just hold that in place while it sets up. You can come back in and nip off the excess tails here as well and that will help it to lay correctly. And this is basically the standard flower with nothing extra added except the center. Now you've got that shaped perfectly. You wanna pull these up and bring that dimension back in. So even though I've not done anything extra to it, the embossing lines do add some detail and that is very pretty. So I really like that size and how easy that was to put together even with me jibber jabbering that went pretty quick okay so here's the ones that i made when i got the package open um i was anxious to start and see um once i had the flower made what i could do to alter it and make it um more interesting so i did a just a plain simple one of each of the colors so i picked red and i've got red stamens here that pink one again, and then the, um, this is sort of a Tiffany Aqua Robin Egg. I don't know what color that is. You guys are always better at knowing the color names than I am. So these are just the basic ones. And for that Robin Egg, I did pull in 
that darker coffee color and I think that matched much better. Second row has the same basic flower but I've added a little bit of stickles. I'm using crystal stickles. I just did the tips and that added a really pretty detail to the edges. For this one, I did the stickles again, but I added some glitter and this is sort of a chunky glitter. You could use whatever you like, um, but I just like that these are kind of uh, square particulates so they kind of are more dimensional so this is sort of a frosty look and I think that looks really pretty so the next one down is the same red um, I used the dime or the crystal stickles again but I switched out the center instead of using a stamen I've added these uh, very nice prills so you want to have like a a sequin tray or a glitter tray to use these otherwise you'll get them everywhere and it'll be a mess but I use um, I'm still using the Tombow mono multi liquid to hold these down I let the first layer dry and then I came back in with another layer of glue and added more of the pearls just to build up the center dimension and I think that looks really pretty okay so for the next row I've inked the edges. So for the blue one, I'm using the Decades from Graphic 45. And this is in the color Bon Voyage. Then I topped it with more of the stickles. So this one is, I think, really absolutely gorgeous. It's not a traditional Christmas color, but I think it's really pretty. For the pink one, I've added Distress Ink in Victorian Velvet. That did add a lot of detail to the edges and it's still really shabby chic and soft and pretty. And then more of the stickles on that one. This one, I attempted to ink. Now red is kind of hard to get detail on because it's already pretty dark and saturated. I used Barb Stock from Memento. It's there, but it's really subtle. You probably can't even see it on camera so that one is still pretty and then I thought the green would be very festive so that's more of those prills this time in ribbit so that's sort of green and then I did the two layers on that one too just to build up the dimension so for the last row which is my favorite I switched out the prills in this one for a berry stem so this has lots of different sort of shapes in here and textures so this one is a little bit nicer instead of using the crystal stickles i switched that out for red and i think that looks very elegant and i think that will be really pretty um, when there are leaves added so one of the things i considered when i was looking at the dyes online is that i already have a fair amount of dyes for foliage and Christmas foliage too. So it didn't make sense to me to spend a lot of extra, you know, money on things that I already had. So I did not want to have a new die set that had leaves that I already had. And that's part of the reason why I made that decision. Okay, so this one is my favorite. I took that inked edge with the stamen and then I added this to the tip so this is the glitter snow this will take uh quite a bit longer to dry and you have to be very patient which i'm not usually but i do love how it turned out so i put this on first with a paintbrush and did each tip very carefully it didn't really take that long to get them coated but it just took a long time to dry once that was dry I came back in with that stickle on top. So now it's really frosty and glittery. And I think it just looks really magical, which, you know, is a goal. If you're making Christmas cards and you want to add a lot of detail, this is how you bring it in. So I think that will be perfect for any kind of shabby chic Christmas theme. Okay, so the last one is that same process but on the blue i didn't ink it this time just wanted to see what would happen i did add a little bit more of the faux snow and i love it this is so frosty and glittery just like uh, 
snowy morning. And I think that's really pretty. So this is the variety that I got using different details to finish it. It's the same dye and I think they all look really beautiful. So I want to show you the ones that I did. I usually like to stack flowers in arrangements that have a variety of sizes so that you can build in a shape or you know add in the volume of flowers you like. So it occurred to me that if I just used a couple of the dyes, I could make some smaller flowers, which I did. And generally what happens is I would like to finish the centers with a jewel, or in this case, I brought in some, you know, different blingy bits or pearls, and they just didn't look right because that center is so full that it just looked really small. It doesn't bother me because I'm going to layer these anyway. So by the time I get these in, you're not gonna see the center. If it bothers you or you just want smaller flowers, go back in with that, the stamens and add a couple. Don't add a lot, but bring in a little bit just so you can fill in that center. But you can see that's a nice shape. So I've got like a bigger one, a medium and a smaller one and that sort of fills in an arrangement that looks nice. So you can still do the different sizes of flowers, just use a couple of the dies instead of all of them. So here is that, and then I just wanna show you, this is the one that I did start with. <clears throat> so this one was the Cherry Lynn Poinsettia die. And another issue I have with this is that it does cut all in a row and for my little machine, um, it almost hangs off the end. So I don't always get them perfectly successful on either side. And that's a little frustrating because I don't like to waste paper. It still works. And it, I really like them for like the Halloween flowers that we did with the different color card stock. We did black with, with the glitter. Um, and so here's the finished flower with that. And you can see the difference is that these petals are so much fuller and nicer. It only took four layers to get this a volume, which is the other one is one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're, the, they're just a little pokier looking. I still like them. So I'm gonna rate this one, the Spellbinders Cinch and Go Poinsettia. 10 out of 10. I would buy this again for sure. It's a good value for money two at Amazon because it was only $9 in free shipping if you're a Prime member. So that's nice. This one was 21. So maybe I would consider it if it went on sale, but I really like the look of the other one better. So maybe I'm gonna give that one a five out of 10. So that is my first review of a new supply or tool. And I hope this helps you because I really wanted to find this information online and I couldn't. So that is just the more you know, the better informed you will be when you go to purchase your own new supplies. So, okay, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a like, leave me a comment. And if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.